In this video, we will have a closer look at the Cairo sodality, and most of the abilities circle around ground forces and the interesting ways that they can spread, like the plague. But before going into this interesting part of this faction, let me quickly get two of the minor abilities out of the way. The first one is their mech. It says, when this unit would be destroyed, if it is damaged, you may discard one action card to repair it instead. And even though we are encouraged to go into the green tech tree because of our starting techs, and I will come back to that in a moment, then we don't start with the neural motivator. So repairing mechs with this ability could be a little bit expensive. The second one is our commander, and to unlock him, we need to have six infantry and six fighters on the game board. And when we have that, let me get this ability. When you cast votes, remove any number of your infantry from the game board to cast one additional vote for each infantry removed. So it is a little bit similar to Hakan, where they can use one trade good to get two additional votes. And this could also become relevant for this faction, because we will have a lot of infantry out on the game board. But I still think it is fairly risky to uh, sacrifice infantry and our defenses to cast more votes. But of course, if it can make a difference, then it could be relevant to do. And with these two abilities out of the way, let's have a look at their starting technologies. The Cairo Sodality needs to pick between either Daxiv Animators and Biostems. And normally I would go for Biostems because I think that is a much stronger technology than Daxiv Animators. But with the Cairo Sodality, this technology could actually be really interesting to have. Because it says, after you win a ground combat, you may place one infantry from your reinforcements on that planet. And I will come back to why this is pretty interesting for the Cairo Sodality. So let's start with Daxiv Animators. Now let's have a look at their uh, starting units. So let's start with a carrier, a dreadnought, three infantry, a destroyer, and a space dock. So this is not exactly overwhelming, but it is enough to gain control of these three planets in two systems. But we can easily fill out our slice in round one with the abilities that we have, because we have a lot of ways to get more infantry out. So let me first just quickly grab the two uh, planet system here. So let's say that's our first turn, and then Let's have a look at some of their faction abilities. We will skip Contagion for now and look at Plague Reservoir. Once per action during invasion on a planet that contains your units, you may resolve ground combat on that planet, even if it does not contain another player's ground forces. So that means that we gain control of one of these planets, we can initiate a ground combat, and that brings me back to the Daxiv animators, because after you win a ground combat, you may place one infantry from your reinforcements on that planet. So we will do that. Let's just say we did it on this one. We can only do it once per action. And then let's get to uh, the third faction ability called Subversive. When participating in a combat that would end in a draw, you are treated as the winner instead. And I found two ways where a combat could end in a draw. It could of course be in a space combat where the other player place a skilled retreat, then normally that space combat would end in a draw, but now we could be the winner instead and potentially score one of those uh, secret objectives where we need to destroy another player's uh, flagship for instance. But another way could also be, so let's say we participate in ground combat on Hope's End against the purple player here, and we just get a single infantry on the planet, and I will quickly show you how we could get that. And let's just say that both of our infantry are destroyed during that combat, and then it would normally end in a draw, but we can be treated as the winner instead. And because we have Daxiv animators, then after you win a ground combat, you may place one infantry on that planet. There we go. So the ground combat ended in a draw, but we won anyways. But we have even more ways to get our infantry out. If we take a closer look at our agent, after a player loses or draws a ground combat, you may exhaust this card to allow that player to replenish their commodities, place a number of infantry equal to one less than their commodity value on one planet you control. So let's just say that we lost out here on Hope's End, so we lose that infantry that, that fought there, then we can exhaust the card, replenish our commodities, and then we can get an infantry in our home system instead. I'm not sure how often we're going to use this agent ourselves, but I think this could be a fairly easy sell to other players. But it gets even wilder, because if we look at Contagion here, our first faction ability, after you resolve the primary or secondary ability of the politics card, 
commit one infantry from your reinforcements to each of two planets that are in or adjacent to a system that contains a planet you control. Resolve in invasion on those planets. Let's just say we have the politics card ourselves, but it co could also be another player. So whenever that is played, then since because we have control of Lysis and Belnor here, then these two planets are adjacent to this system. So we could place one infantry on each of those, use our Plague Reservoir Faction ability and resolve ground combat on that planet, declare ourselves as winner and then duplicate our infantry. So we have two infantry out on those planets. And now we just need to use our second action to fly our Dreadnought out here with a infantry and then we have completely filled out our slice. And we started with three infantry and we ended the game round with nine and we haven't even produced any infantry on our space dock yet. If you don't already own the game, then you can buy it through one of the affiliate links in the video description below. In this way, you will support the channel because I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost for you. So thank you if you do. But we still have one more way to get infantry out, and that is the flagship called the Auriga. When you commit units to a planet in this system, you may commit one infantry from your reinforcements to that planet. So that almost counts just as capacity 4, except it is dedicated to an infantry and not just fighters. And the other stats are pretty standard for a flagship. Now let's have a look at our first faction tech. It's called Indoctrination Teams. It requires two green technologies, and then it says, During the agenda phase, after an outcome you voted for is resolved, place two infantry from your reinforcements on a planet you control. So with this technology, we could potentially get four infantry out in each agenda phase, which seems pretty strong as well, but I'm not sure it's really worth going for for this technology. But if you have any experience, feel free to share in the comments below. And now let's have a look at the faction promissory note, the Cairo Rider. After an agenda is revealed, you cannot vote on this agenda. Predict allowed an outcome of this agenda if your prediction is correct, place three infantry from your reinforcements on a planet you control. So it is slightly better than our faction tech here. And I think this uh, promissory note should be a very easy sell in every single game round. Just make sure to don't sell it to anybody that you want to take planets from. And now let's have a look at our second faction technology called the Vector Programs. At the start of the strategy phase, you may place any number of your trade goods on any combination of strategy cards. Then place two trade goods from the supply on one strategy card. So we have to sacrifice our own trade goods first to use this ability. But I guess if we are the speaker, then we could place one trade good from our command sheet here and place additional two from the supply there. And then in this way we have gained two extra trade goods and if we are sitting next to the speaker, then we could, of course, place one trade good on the card he wants, and then we can place another two on the card that we want. So even though we are a low commodity faction, I think we will, at least with this technology, have fairly easy access to more trade goods. And lastly, we have the hero, and it is unlocked by having three scored objectives. And when we do that, it says, at the start of the status phase, you may attach this card to one of your strategy cards. Its initiative value is 9. non Cairo players may only resolve one clause of this strategy card's primary ability. The Cairo player gains any trade goods placed on this card. So before we return our strategy cards, we will attach the hero to the strategy card that we have, or one of the two that we have, and then it stays here. So it doesn't say anything about being perched. And that means that whenever we get to the strategy phase where we select strategy cards, then this card is still attached. And the politics card in this example now has initiative nine. So for the rest of the game, then the other players may only resolve one of these three clauses on the strategy card. And if any trade goods are placed on this card, then they are reserved for the Cairo player. And I guess that makes sense with the Vector programs, because now we can dedicate the trade goods to ourselves. But let's have a look at the strategy cards here. So if we put it on leadership, then the other players must choose between either getting three free command tokens, or they can buy command tokens by spending influence. On diplomacy, it doesn't really make any sense because there is only one clause. On politics, then they can choose to be the speaker choose to get two action cards or choose to look at the two top cards of the agenda deck. 
On the construction card, the other players can only place one structure whenever they play this card. And on trade, we will really limit the number of trade goods coming out because the trade player will have to choose between gaining three trade goods or replenish his own commodities or uh, replenish other players' commodities. And on Warfare, we can either remove one command token and gain one command token or redistribute our command tokens on our sheet. And on technology, I think it's fairly safe to assume that they will only research one technology for three and the second clause will not be in use for the rest of the game. And lastly, on Imperial, the player has to choose between immediately scoring one public objective or gain one victory point if they control Megator Rex or draw a secret objective. So the hero is not exactly making the Cairo player stronger himself, but definitely uh, limits the other players when it comes to the strategy cards. So I think the use of the hero is very situational and something you really need to be strategic about and play it at the right moment during the game. And that was it for the Cairo Sodality. I haven't tried playing them myself, but I think they have some really interesting faction abilities, so I want to do that. But if you have tried to play them, feel free to share your experience in the comments below. Thank you for watching.